I'm back with a tutorial that I teased you guys with when I did that Muse 7.0 video where I introduced my favorite features of Muse 7.0 and I talked about one of them and I think I promised to do a tutorial on it and then I didn't. I totally forgot. So here it is, the forgotten Muse 7.0 tutorial. You may remember that in one of my examples when explaining the big Muse 7.0 update, I showed a banner across the top of a web page that changed as I scrolled and that's part of the feature that allows us to change a slideshow uh, based on scroll position so here is a reworked example where as I scroll down when I reach the next paragraph the banner at the top changes and I keep scrolling it changes again and I keep scrolling and it changes again now this is just a slideshow up here at the top these pictures are contained within a slideshow and then that slideshow is set to change based on scroll position. I believe this example it is set to change every 700 pixels because that's how far apart these paragraphs are from one another. So let me show you how I built it. I'm going to close this and here are the files that I've created for myself before I got started. I made the images that go in my slideshow ahead of time and you'll want to do the same. You'll need to have uh, images that can be transparent if they're PNG files they can be on a transparent background like mine are uh, if I open them up in Photoshop you see that checkerboard pattern um, showing that the backgrounds transparent if I throw some color behind it you could see that whatever color my PNG goes on top of is the color that shows as the background which just gives me more flexibility in Muse I could create a slideshow of uh, of images on a white background and then put them on a white web page and I wouldn't see the box but if you want to be able to put these every which where and be able to change your background in Muse then you want to create uh, transparent graphics for yourself so I've got transparent graphics here that are 800 by 180 pixels and they're all the same pixel dimensions and that'll help me keep these things lined up in Muse. It's helpful if you're creating these graphics in Illustrator or Photoshop to create them at the same scale so that way you don't have to deal with weird scale issues later in Muse. So let me hop back over to Muse and let me hop into my example that does not yet have the slideshow or the scroll effects applied and I'm gonna preview this in the browser so you guys can see that all it is is uh, a few paragraphs of text that are spaced out and then you'll notice that the top and bottom boxes are not moving that's because they're pinned so if you're not familiar with pinned objects uh, if I select this rectangle here you can see on the toolbar at the top of Muse pin and then I have it pinned top and center in the browser and I also have this box scaled all the way to the outer edge of my page that makes it a 100 percent wide box so if I open up my browser again I can make the browser wider or more narrow and it still expands across the entire browser it's not of a specific size it's of an infinitely wide size that stays 100 percent of the browser width so I did that for the box at the top and then I option dragged it down to the bottom uh, alt drag if you're on a PC and that'll duplicate it but then the one at the bottom I made it smaller it doesn't need to be so big and I pinned it to the bottom of the browser so if you look at pin here I have it pinned to bottom center that means that it doesn't move and that means the top one stays at the top the bottom one stays at the bottom and that is of the browser so as I move the browser up down and around uh, it stays to the bottom of the browser on that bottom bar and it stays at the top of the browser with the top bar and it stays at 100 percent page width um, for both of them so it's filling nicely but I don't have my slideshow yet so once you get that set up and you don't need to set yours up to match uh, you don't need a bar at the top you don't need a bar at the bottom but if you're wondering how I did that where the center content the center content is sort of framed uh, by these bars that's how I did it so let me close this up and let's go back to muse and my background image by the way if you guys are curious about that background image that is a free download on museresources.com so if you like that go to the graphics tab of museresources.com it's the first blurred background in the blurred background pack so that's where I got that from alright so back to Muse and I now want to create my slideshow so to create the slideshow it does have to be a slideshow composition it can't be uh, a blank composition so if you guys aren't sure what I'm talking about head to the widgets library panel over here 
and go to the slideshows folder hit the little disclosure triangle to expand that uh, not compositions you can create what appear to be like slideshows using the compositions but for the scroll effect to work it, it has to be in the slideshows folder and I'm just gonna grab a blank one I'm gonna grab a blank one because I don't need any of the sample content and when I do that it gives me this navigation at the bottom it gives me these numbers at the bottom it gives me a little description at the bottom I don't want any of that and if you guys don't see that black box with all your options this little blue circle with a triangle in it in the top right corner of the composition will pop that out and you want to uncheck all these parts down here you don't want previous button you don't want next button you don't want counter captions none of that you also don't want autoplay because you don't want the the banner at the top to be cycling when the viewer is not scrolling otherwise it'll say something other than what the viewer is looking at and you also don't want to enable swipe so that way if someone's looking on an iOS device or if they're looking on an Android device they don't accidentally swipe the banner to the next section when they haven't scrolled down to the next section yet I'm gonna leave the transition on fade and I'm gonna leave the transition speed at half a second you guys can change that to your hearts content I'm just gonna leave it at the defaults for our example and then I'm gonna click back onto our box here and our box is gray I don't want a gray box I deliberately created graphics that have a transparent background so that way I wouldn't have a box around them in the first place so I'm gonna go up to fill and I'm going to click on the fill color which you can do next to the word fill without expanding the fill options and I'm gonna hit the white box with the red slash through it that gives me a transparent box now I've got what I want I wanted a transparent slideshow box now it's the wrong size so I'm gonna go over to transform and on the transform panel I don't want 480 by 360 again my images are 800 by 180 so I want my slideshow box to also be 800 by 180 there we go and now that I've got that hammered out I can kinda get it into position before I even put the images in there and now I'm ready to drop in my images now I'm on a Mac so I can just go to the finder over here and I've got these images which I can select all of by holding the command key that should be control on your PC and I can drag them over all together and drop them into that box by clicking on it now I've got them all in there I've established the slideshow I haven't told the computer yet how I want the slideshow to advance with scrolling that's gonna be in the next step but I at least have the images in there now what you might want to concern yourself with before we move to the next step is what order the images are in because they might be in the wrong order since you've created your website and you've put the content on the website already most likely you've got an idea of what order the content is in so you know what order the banners need to go in if you haven't created the content yet then maybe you've sketched it out and you've decided what order you want things to be in maybe you've hadn't but if you want to change the order of the slideshow the moral of the story is you can do that from the layers palette the easiest way to do that is from the layers palette and my layers won't load right now it gives me that little issue every now and then there we go so now I've got to find the layer where this slideshow exists okay here we go here's the slideshow and I'll expand that with the triangle and here is the order that things are in in that slideshow so I don't have to deal with thumbnails or anything like that I can just do it straight from the layers palette and if I'm happy with the order then I'm good to go if I'm not happy with the order you can click these little boxes that are next to the layer name to see what that layer looks like you can see which image that is in the slideshow and the order of things goes from bottom to top not from top to bottom so this cloud based choice here this is actually the first one being that it's at the bottom and local would be second local support and then security would be third and technologies would be last so if that's the order that I have my content on the website then I'm good to go if not you can drag to rearrange these things if I want cloud based to be second I just accomplish that by dragging it up a spot and now local support is the first item so if you've got your order established now we can move on to the scroll effect that makes this happen so go ahead and find your scroll effects panel and it is the third tab of the scroll effects panel where you've got slideshow and if you can't seem to check that box click away from your slideshow and click back on it and you should be able to check the slideshow box now that I have the slideshow box set I have two choices to make one is how quickly do the slides change 
autoplay that's not going to work for me i need it to switch slides every certain number of pixels because i've got my content a certain number of pixels apart so if you guys have created your web page already you might not even know how far apart your sections are for the page i'm going to zoom out and i'm going to scramble things up so that way we can do this together all right so i've got things all scrambled up they're no distance apart because i just made a big mess so now i'm going to part, start putting things where i want them so i'm going to put this one up here right under the banner and i'm going to put this one down here and i'm going to put this one down here etc cetera, etc cetera. and now i have unevenly spaced stuff so this isn't going to work out what you need to do is evenly space your bits of content apart so my paragraphs need to be evenly spaced away from one another so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the second one up with the first one see how they snap together like that real nice and I'm going to go back to the transform panel and my Y coordinate tells me how close this is from the top it's 248 pixels from the top what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add to the end of that plus I'm typing the plus sign 700 and when I hit return, it adds it 700 pixels further down the page. So I'm going to slide this over holding the shift key. If you guys don't know that shortcut, dragging something holding the shift key, make sure that you don't slip up or down if you're dragging left to right. And if you're dragging up and down, it makes sure that it doesn't slip left to right. So basically, dragging holding shift keeps you on rails. So now this next section, I'm going to line it up with the second one. And I'm going to do the same thing, the Y coordinates. I'm going to add 700. And you can add whatever number you want as long as you're adding the same number to each section. And I'm going to shift drag it over and do this one. i got to remember that I've been adding 700 each time. 700. See, isn't that great how the transform panel actually does math for you? I love that. It automatically does the math. You can type in plus or minus and it just does it for you. So I did 700 because it's a nice amount of gap. Uh, your website will differ, I'm sure, than from mine. But 700 is looking like a good solid gap here. So I'm going to zoom back in. And now I need to tell my slideshow that I need it to switch slides every 700 pixels. So let me do that. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to type switch slides every 700 pixels. And I'm going to hit return. So now that I've got that done, what the heck is this? Well, this is key position, but what does key position have to do with anything? Uh, is that going to determine, determine where my uh, slideshow begins to change? Uh, actually, yes, it does determine when your slideshow begins to change. But I know what you're thinking. I already said switch every 700 pixels, so shouldn't it change for the first time when I reach 700 pixels from the start? The answer is kind of. It's going to change every 700 pixels, but my first bit of content is not 700 pixels down the page. It's actually only 250 pixels down the page. So when I start to scroll, let me preview this in the browser real quick. When I start to scroll up, oh, look at that, my banner slid off. We missed a step. Before you preview this in the browser, you might not even want to bother previewing this in the browser like I did. Uh, you do have to make sure the slideshow is pinned to the top, just like I did with this box here. So if your slideshow is not yet pinned to the top, make sure that you pin it to the top and center. So I'm going to preview it in the browser again. And as I scroll, now I've scrolled 700 pixels. So these were 700 pixels apart. They are 700 pixels apart. And when I reach 700 pixels, this does change but maybe getting it to the very top where it's centered is too late for it to change I personally would like for the banner to change as the content enters the frame see how it still says local support that was the first paragraph as the second paragraph is entering it still hasn't changed yet because I haven't quite gone 700 pixels yet so this comes back to key position the key position determines whether or not each event happens a little bit later or a little bit earlier than the switch slides every gap. So I do have a 700, uh, 700 pixel gap, but I would like it to change a little bit earlier. I'm going to say minus 200 pixels. So they're all going to change a little bit earlier. They're going to change 200 pixels earlier than every 700. So right now... 
there's 200 pixels earlier. See how it's not quite at the top or the, the text hasn't come quite all the way up uh, to the center of the frame? It changes earlier, and it's changing 700 pixels earlier. Or I'm sorry, it's changing 200 pixels earlier because that's what I typed into the key position box, negative 200 pixels. Had I typed just 200 pixels, I would be saying I want it to change 200 pixels later than where it normally would change. So let's preview it in the browser with positive 200. So here's a 700 pixel uh, scroll that I've done, but it's not going to change until 200 pixels later, which is real dumb. I don't want it to do that. I want it to change earlier than having the content centered, not later. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change it back to negative 200. And now I'm saying change 200 pixels earlier than every 700 pixels. So the first value here, this is an absolute value. This is going to offset each one equally. It's going to offset each section equally. Whereas the second option, if you get this number off, then your problem is going to become a bigger and bigger problem the more and more you scroll. If you're off by 50 pixels, then the second time you're off by 100 pixels, and the third time you're off by 150 pixels, etc, etc. So switch slides every, that's uh, really it's the easier one because you can make sure to gap these by 700 pixels if you're typing in 700 pixels. Uh, and if you switch this to 650, then you can go back and make sure that your gaps between the content sections are 650. So this one's a little more forgiving. Uh, and then the key position, the key position really, you don't know it until you try it. You don't know how early you need things to show up until you notice that they're showing up too late. So play with that, preview in the browser, go back and play with it more, preview in the browser, etc., etc., and you should be good. And again, don't forget to pin your slideshow, otherwise it'll just scroll up and off the screen. I always forget to pin my slideshow, even when I'm recording a tutorial. So if you guys like this tutorial, then I hope you've subscribed already, but if you haven't, please subscribe. And if you like these little icons, by the way, you guys may have noticed that I added to museresources.com a new icon pack. It's called the Icon Mega Pack and it is available for download now but I did make it five dollars and I apologize I feel kinda bad it's the first thing that I've charged for but it took a really frickin long time to make 250 icons for Muse so if you guys use icons in your design I know that I can't design anything without using icons uh, at one point or another then go and download that Icon Mega Pack and then you get icons like this I've got uh, some security icons, I've got some tool based icons, just all kinds of versatile icons that uh, I found myself in need of when I was designing websites. Location and contact icons, they're really really fantastic and five bucks uh, for a Muse library file that installs itself into your Muse library so you can just start dragging stuff in and changing the colors. I'll give you a quick little sneak peek of that. Here we go, so I got devices so I got a phone here a tablet a computer I'll drag in this laptop computer and it comes in blue but I can go up to effects and I can go over here to glow and I can change the color um, to whatever I want so uh, this this is five dollars really well spent if you guys have any interest in adding icons to your to your library so Hopefully you guys check out museresources.com and I hope you subscribe and I will have plenty more tutorials coming soon. Thanks guys.